Hi, everyone. Welcome to our second symposium with YSB. We're so excited to have Anne and Viva here with us today. And I'll allow Viva to introduce herself and then we can get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Viva. I'm a sophomore in Washington State and I'm here with YSB. And Anne, if you could introduce yourself, let us know a little bit more about you and your work at Sunnyview. Sure, so my name is Ann Cook. I am the Life Enrichment Specialist here at Sunnyview. Um, I, when I first came into Sunnyview, I was a Life Enrichment Specialist for residential. Um, after, I'm going on year four, so now I am now the Life Enrichment Specialist for our memory care unit as well. So I gained an extra um, um, 23 residents. Um, and so I work with a team of about 13, and that includes wellness. Um, and also transportation, and we do a lot of different activities here at Sunnyview. Thank you, Anne. Something that we were wondering about was sort of your background and what brought you into your work at Sunnyview and how you kind of eased into the roles that you did. Okay, well, um, I actually, in college, I studied what they called recreational therapy. So recreational therapy is actually um, in correlation with um, occupational, physical um, therapy, wellness. It's actually a part of an interdisciplinary team um, in a clinical setting to do treatment for different populations. So it could be spinal cord injury, it could be, um, you know, stroke patients. And it's really um, activities that will enhance um, the resident's quality of life after like a traumatic event, whether it's a physical event, a mental event. Um, and it's really to support their, their life and their activities and to create routines and consistency within their, their daily life. And for them to have quality of life um, during their retirement. And how I got to know Sunnyview, I started out actually in skilled nursing, and um, I've always taken care of my grandmother. And so she was the one that sort of started my passion for this field. And then I started out in skilled nursing. Um, I did an internship in Morgan Hill, and then I worked um, from skilled nursing to assisted living, and then I started specializing um, within my time working in dementia and Alzheimer's. And then I actually spe started specializing in dementia and Alzheimer's because my work after skilled nursing ended up being in memory care um, within a 10 year span. And so then um, what brought me to Sunnyview was I had worked in memory care for a while, so I wanted to take a break. And I came into assisted living where the residents were higher functioning. And I, then I always knew I was going to go back to memory care. So when the opportunity came, I went back and now I have the best of both worlds. And so I really enjoy what I'm doing, creating activities, really just interacting with residents and really just trying to provide um, the best quality of life for them through different, through, through different types of activities, um, whether it's spiritual, whether it's music, whether it's painting, arts and crafts, just a whole variety of different um, different things they can do to really help um, you know maintain them living here for the rest of their lives. Wow, it's amazing how many different parts you're working with Sunnyview. Um, what would you say your favorite part is about being there? I think my favorite part is actually seeing the smiles on the residents' faces. And when they say thank you, it really makes you feel like you've done like um, a good job really, you know, like um, trying to uplift them. Um, and also when they say something totally out of the blue, unexpected, that's always like the best part. When, you're, when you least expect it, they're saying something out of the blue and it just makes you smile and laugh and it just makes your day. That's so heartwarming. I totally love, and it's, I'm so inspired by how it's like the little things that really keep you going. Yeah. Um, I think we've all been kind of dealing with 
the consequences of the pandemic for almost close to two years now. Mm -hmm. And I really would like to kind of learn more about what it's been like for you and how, you know, over your time at Sunnyview, how you feel like the pandemic has kind of affected and played into that. Yeah. So the pandemic actually, like you said, was really hard on everyone, especially our seniors. You know, a lot of our seniors that were outgoing, you know, before the pandemic that would come to a lot of the activities and that would be very social, um, you know, during that year, I noticed that their health declined, their, you know, their mental state declined. And it was really unfortunate to see, regardless of if we tried to provide, you know, additional one-on-one, -on -one, we, even though we, you know, tried to connect them with loved ones through Zoom and FaceTime, um, you know, they, a lot of them, now that we're reopened, still actually still stay in their room and don't come out as much. Um, they slowly will make their way, but a lot of them still have resided in their, in their room and um, I guess lately they've been happy because now they're able to find different things to sort of keep them busy, whether it's reading a book or whether it's knitting. So they've picked up some new hobbies, but yet um, I don't see the residents that normally come out to a lot of the activities um, come out. Um, and then we've also had lost a lot of residents too. And so I think it was really hard for, um, the friends of these residents that we lost to really sort of recoup from that as well as the pandemic. And so we just try to find different ways to really, you know, um, make it fun every day for them, make them, you know, try to connect them with new residents um, that they normally haven't met or um, haven't really talked to and just kind of make new friends. So we really try different ways um, as a team, as a team, to really get residents um, to come out and be more involved. And then um, to have the older residents that used to come out to activities to start a new routine again of coming out and to get back into the swing of things. But it's been really hard because a lot of activities that we were able to do in person, we had to switch to video. And of course, um, in-person interaction is not the same as video. So, um, you know, it would, a lot of times, the residents would be like, oh, no, it's just a video. I mean, that's not really anything, you know, I need to see. So then they, they would just, you know, be in their room and be like, okay, well, I guess I'll just go to sleep. And, you know, and I felt, you know, that it really traumatized them because it was almost like now they're in a depressive state. And it, would, and it was really hard to get a lot of them to really, you know, enjoy Enjoy life again and it's everyone slowly coming through but it does it is taking a while um you know we've only re reopened for a few months now but hopefully next year it'll be better um you know there are more things we're doing now everybody else can come in person now um and so the attendance and participation has gotten better we are getting new residents that are more um, active and higher functioning and more interested in a lot of our activities so i think that's really helping the community and the activities themselves. Yeah, pandemic really changed things for everyone. It's yeah, it's hard. So, how is it like for you personally, like for work at Sunnyview or your energy levels throughout the day? How's that? So, been yeah. So when I had to, um, um, when we had to shelter in place. Um, I actually did um, an activity cart, and, but it was more work because I had to go to every single room and I had to offer more things that were a little bit um, easier to have done in groups versus one-on-one. -on -one. So I had to make a lot of like individual arts and crafts kits and make sure I had all the supplies, you know, in these kits for them to be able to do on their own. I had to, um, when it came to like special events with like food and stuff, we, I would have to figure out what staff was available to help me pass out the food and we would we would dress up and try to make it like all more lively and provide music and stuff. Um, with the vendors, a lot of them, they had to play outside. When it was cold, I had to figure out a way and how they could, um, you know, actually play in the doorway so, they, so the residents wouldn't be cold, so they didn't have to go outside, but could be at a distance. Um, I had to switch most of the things that were in person to video. So I had to work with some of the vendors who created their own Zoom links, who would send them to me. And then um, on their scheduled date, I would just, you know, 
um, put them on Zoom and they would do their presentations from Zoom and share their screen like we're doing right now. So I really had to modify pretty much almost every single activity that was in person into a video and re really remember all the key um, things um, to make that video happen. Um, I would embed videos like I, we had talked about earlier um, into our community channels. And that was actually fairly easy to do, but I also had to make sure that they ran on the same at the time and date that I wanted them to run. I had to make sure that they were running properly. Um, sometimes the TV wouldn't work. I would have to call maintenance. Um, so it really was a lot of just like ins and outs that needed to be done and a lot of detail that really had to be you know, organized and sorted out before any of this was successful. And in the end, pretty much, I think for the most part, um, a lot of these things did work. I think the challenging part for um, the residents was doing the Zoom and actually like if they had to talk to family members, they would, the family members would have to go by the window and they would have to set up an appointment and to see their loved ones from the window um, or in the lobby and they would have to remember to stay, you know, six feet apart. We would have to bring them, the, re the families couldn't come in. Um, and we would also have to help them if the family wanted to do Zoom. So the families would have to send me their Zoom links and then I would have to remember what Zoom links from which family sent me, and then we would have to set it up for the residents ahead of time and actually stay there to make sure that the conversation was going good and then go back and actually like, you know, help them help them finish the Zoom and to make sure that um, all the equipment um, was working properly. So it was a lot of technical, a lot of things that really need a lot of hands. Um, and for the most part, you know, people that were available did help, but I think it was just a lot of ins and outs that really, you know, created some challenges, but we did the best we could, so. And we totally applaud you for all of your hard work and that perseverance and determination you have to confront all of these challenges and take care of so much for the seniors and for sending you as a whole. Um, it's really inspiring and amazing to hear that, you know, you kind of brave through all of this and it leaves us wondering what kind of pulled you through all of this? What brought you strength during all of these moments of adversity and difficulty? I think just knowing that um, in the end, you know, like we kept all the residents safe um, and that um, we didn't really have many residents who got sick. And I think um, even though the families were a little bit upset about our protocols and, you know, would sort of fight it or resist it and stuff, I think in the end, the families really truly understood why we did what we did um, and really appreciated how, you know, um, we, we worked through this pandemic. And also I think because a lot of families showed appreciation in different ways. And I think that's really what makes staff want to you know, um, do what they do is the appreciation from families. And then also from, you know, from the top down, like, you know, the directors and leadership, you know, uh, of, you know, different people just really um, showing appreciation, I think is what kept some of the staff going. Yeah, I have to say it, it's amazing everything that you're doing. Um, are there any particular aspects of your work that you feel like aren't very much known or something that you feel isn't talked about too much? Yeah, I think activities in general, the department isn't talked about too much or acknowledged as much. I think because a lot of people from the outside when they don't really necessarily know what activities does, like sometimes if we're showing a movie, you know, people see us standing around, but really they think we're not working or we're just fooling around but i think a lot of people don't understand what what it what work it takes to really create activities and actually carry them out and if there's technical difficulties what we do and how we can get everyone involved and when we have to plan big events i think um, a lot of people in the end finally realize when they do it themselves oh my gosh that was so much work like i applaud but the activity staff but in general i think um, from the outside looking in when you when you don't really know what activities does and, and and most people usually don't ask I think the challenge for for us is that you know um, we try to explain 
things when fam when people ask what we do instead of them having the perspective of oh you know oh activities oh that means you just have fun every day but that's not true it's more of a like yeah it's a science too though you know we're creating activities for a reason but you don't know how much planning it goes to create a calendar or you know to come up with creative ideas and how to implement an activity or carry it out or you know if they see like an activity that's titled okay movie I mean, like, they're like, oh, you guys just watch movies all day. Well, that's not true. We're watching, you know, a movie, but it could be like, like um, a classic Hollywood movie from their era. And there's like a meaning behind it. So I think what people really don't know is that activities actually is a really tough job. And I think people who don't work in this field or even like, for example, um, you know, students that are in training like nurses and stuff like we have some nurses that are in training right now um they'll come and they'll just look at you and they'll just be like oh wow this looks like fun but then you know um they're just thinking like oh well oh it's easy enough i could probably do that and when when you know they don't really know what it took to create and implement and really set up everything to get the activity going and running smoothly That's, I think that's, that's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's so important that, and I wish that there was a way to kind of ease that transparency and allow for better understanding mm -hmm. um, from an outsider's perspective of what it's really been like. And it's definitely something that's not talked about. And I'm hoping that through this panel and through future conversation, we're able to bring more of that to the forefront because it definitely, um, you know, as a caregiver and as someone that's doing so much from an administrative perspective as well, Mm -hmm. There's just so much that, you know, isn't ever talked about. Um, yeah. And there's actually an activity. And um, just so you guys know, there's actually, um, I think it's April where it's actually Activity Professionals Week. And so with that, you know, I, I our past um, director would, you know, sort of acknowledge, she would give us like a party and stuff because activity professionals, like there's a lot of communities out there. I just took a training class and um, there were like 43 um, of us on this Zoom um, class. It was a four day class. And these were all activity people that worked in different communities throughout California. And it was a state licensing, um, it was a state licensing class. And um, a lot of these activity assistants were becoming activity directors. But um, I was one of the senior ones. And so like a lot of the questions they had were actually things that I used to get from a lot of staff too when they didn't really know what activities was all about. And so we've actually, there actually is a Facebook post now. Uh, it's called Activity Professionals. There's quite a few of them that you can join and then we would share ideas on different activities. So there's actually an Activity Professionals Week. It's, I, I'm pretty sure it's in April. I think it's like the first week in April because it's every year. And then um, there's actually like <coughs> a lot of acti <coughs> sorry, activity, um, like director support groups out there now on Facebook, <clears throat> where you can actually post like activities and share information with other activity directors. That's Just FYI. Really <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. If you could share the resources with us, it's something that we'd love to look into and try and promote on our end as well um, to try and help out with increasing that transparency and you know, maybe bringing yeah. more people that want to learn about it into that loop. Yeah, if you go onto the um, Facebook, you could just type in activity director um, search and then it'll come up with a few like Facebook um, like um, groups for activity directors. You can look at that first and then um, kind of take a look at some of the <clears throat> posts that people posted from their communities. And it's really amazing because there's so many creative ideas and it's good that, you know, you can share ideas. Um, and then you can kind of like give each other inspiration and really like comment on each other's work and kind of like, um, you know, give additional help to those that need it. So yeah, look on Facebook first for under activity director, you'll find a lot of uh, Facebook um, like groups and posts on that. We definitely will look into that. Thank you, Anne. We kind of circling back to the seniors and going off of all of these ideas and work that you've been doing, you know, pulling information from these support groups to try and make the experience easier and make this time a lot more lively for our seniors. Would you say that there are any big lessons or anything that you've learned about seniors specifically during this time as you've kind of watched that transition from pre-pandemic to, you know, this time that we're living in and, you know, as we're starting to see, hopefully, like a light at the end of the tunnel? 
Yeah, so I mean, I think what I've learned for seniors in general is that, um, you know, seniors, like a lot of them have lived a good life and a lot of them have like a lot of it, have had a lot of experience and, and a lot of knowledge. And so I think oftentimes like, you know, people like even going out to lunch, for example, like bringing my residents out to lunch, <clears throat> sometimes the the staff there will s still treat treat the seniors like they're like they're little kids, whereas the, a lot of these seniors, they they are adults still. You're supposed to treat them with the adult that they are and the dignity that they still have as an adult, <clears throat> because a lot of them, you know, were very like i said very educated very smart and a lot of them still are smarter than me i mean like there's a lot of things that i may not necessarily know that they know <clears throat> you know like i had a couple who climbed mount kilimanjaro and i mean who my age or even maybe younger actually have done that in their life we don't know you know so i think a lot of people just they, they give you a lot of like life lessons and advice and i think it's always good to embrace that <clears throat> because, um, you know, nowadays, even in society, when we, we to take them out, like I said, you know, people treat them still like their kids. And when they're really were parents themselves, and they're really adults. Yeah, it's important to make sure that we we understand where where all our seniors are coming from and make sure we know their background as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess another question that we had was, how has the pandemic, like what has the pandemic taught you about your own work and just in general, what has it taught you? So um, the pandemic has taught me in general of my own work and um, with everything else that you have to be flexible. Things can change like um, automatically, but you just have to kind of go with the flow and just <clears throat> make the changes as needed um, because you never know when you need to make a change. Um, it can come to you like, you know, um, off guard or it can come to you ahead of time, but just to be really flexible and just really open-minded. Absolutely. And sort of to wrap it up, we kind of had one last question for you. Sure. Following along with the vision and everything that YSB is really trying to learn more about and create, we kind of wanted to hear your perspective on why you think it's so important for members of our younger generation and just individuals in general to really connect and form that intergenerational connection with senior citizens. Um, so I really think I've always, I always believe intergenerational programming really enhanced like the quality of <clears throat> an activities program because the seniors of course, you know, um, learn from the younger generation and the younger generation, like I said, learn from the seniors with the stories and and sort of maybe connections that they they've had and and kind of reminiscing about their past because they see the younger generation as like maybe, you know, if they talk to somebody that's like in their 20s <clears throat> versus somebody that's in their like um, like a baby, you know, it kind of reminds them of their own childhood and their upbringing and, and, you know, and they're able to sort of, you know, understand what it was like and kind of revert back to, you know, um, the time that they were that age or that, you know, in that era and just remember some of the things they went through. Um, <clears throat> and I also think that, um, well, I read an article recently that, um, you know, grandparents, when they take care of their grandkids, their quality of life is just so much better and they live longer. And so that's, <clears throat> that's one of the things that sticks with me is that, you know, um, interacting with the younger generation really, really, really will keep the residents going and they will just have just better, I think better health too. That's what I've learned. Yeah, and it's amazing to hear about this entirely new side to when it comes to like geriatric care and seniors. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we pay attention to everything that's going on at the senior homes, what's going on with our elderly. And it was amazing talking with you. And I found a completely new perspective when it comes to, <laughs> um, when it comes to senior care. And I'm so happy that I got to learn from you. Well, thank you. I try to <laughs> give the answers to the best of my ability. I mean, I know I've done this for a while now, but I have actually over, you know, 
um, over this course of time have learned a lot too. And I'm still learning, you know, the seniors teach me something every day, you know, Mm -hmm. whether it's a new song, whether it's like, you know, something that I really haven't known in the past or really knew in the past, but wasn't really like really sure about it. You know, it's, I'm learning every day still. Absolutely. And I think there's just something so precious about that like reciprocal nature of being able to have such a rewarding connection with them and gain so much as we're able to give so much. And we really want to thank you again, Anne, for all the work that you've been doing at Sunnyview. I think it's been so important that seniors have had such a vulnerable time during this pandemic. Yeah. And it's been really difficult for them. And, you know, individuals like you are really doing so much for them. So thank you for all that you're doing and are going to continue to do. And we can't wait to continue working with you and continue learning from you Um, through sessions like this and through senior discussions. um, Are there any last points or anything else that you'd like to talk about? Um, No. Well, one of my vendors, like he always ends his like um, his uh, guest presentation with Carpe Diem. And he's like, go out and seize the day. And he always, and he's a senior himself, like he's retired too, but he does talks on cruise ships, but he he likes our community because he's been coming for a while. And every month he does a different topic, whether it's like something, well, this past um, week on Tuesday, he came and he talked about Thailand and, you know, he's traveled a lot, but he would always say at the end of his presentation, carpe diem, seize the day. And then he'll tell my seniors, go out and do something fun, you know? Um, if you're still, if you're still able to, you know, go out and enjoy the sunshine or do something. So it's like, I think that's really good advice. Like, it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, like just go out and and do something, you know, just try to, try to, you know, seize the day basically. So. There wasn't a better way to end our talk than that. (laughs) Thank you, Anne. You're welcome. Absolutely. I think we're going to continue to uplift one another and get each other going through these difficult times. Um, so thank you for your time today. Um, Vipa, do you have any last points for Anne? Well, I just got to say your work is amazing. And I'm so glad that we have people like you to take care of our seniors. And yeah, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you guys. Um, I look forward to all of our creative ideas. I know you guys are in school, but looking forward to um, different things we can do through the videos and really just, um, you know, um, getting your time, um, giving your time to us and really, you know, um, wanting to help our residents.